So, I just got out of watching The Boy and the Heron, Studio Ghibli's latest film, and I wanted to give my thoughts on the movie, what I liked, what I didn't like, and so on. Keep in mind that this is based after my first viewing of the film, as by the time you're watching this, I would have already seen it for the second time. This is purely subjective, of course, and you're welcome to agree or disagree with me. Also, there will be spoilers ahead. Again, spoilers ahead. I thought this movie was pretty good. Enjoyable overall, and it feels nice to be able to watch a new Ghibli movie by Miyazaki with other fans upon release, since I've never actually seen any of them in theaters prior to Ghibli Fest 2023. The animation was stunning. Oh my lord, it was so pretty. The characters are all animated so smoothly, from Mahito's hair blowing in the wind, the old maids in Natsuko's home, and Mahito helping to cut open a large fish-like creature, and the guts spill out. Even the Grey Heron, with his cartoonish appearance and comically large nose, is pleasant to watch. The backgrounds, oh man, the backgrounds were so gorgeous. There were so many scenes when the backgrounds looked like impressionist paintings, where the obvious brushstrokes lick the sky with waves of color. Oh, it's especially poignant at the beginning of the film, when Mahito is running towards the hospital where his mother is located, engulfed in flames. The colors and lines blur together in ways that really add to the chaos of the scene. Ugh, oh, man, it's gorgeous! The music by Joe Hisaishi does not disappoint. His use of the piano is very good. Complemented with vocals, it adds some mystery to the scenes, especially with the heron. The audio quality of the movie was very astounding, with the crunch of leaves, the heron's talons scratching against the ground and floor, and the waves all sounding beautiful in IMAX. The voice cast was very good. A standout was Robert Pattinson, who voiced the Grey Heron. You can't really tell it's him. He did a fantastic job. I also found the darkness of the movie to be very interesting, in some ways comically so. For one, the way the film presents Mahito's grief at losing his mother, albeit a little shallow in exploration, is notable. The way he picks a fight at school, injures himself, isolates himself from others, and grows a little aggressive towards the heron is really interesting to watch. The violence portrayed in this movie is also noteworthy, since it's the first Ghibli film, I feel, that approaches a level of violence not seen since Princess Mononoke. And the giant man-eating parakeets towards the end of the film that were very ready to stab, mutilate, and eat Mahito is horrifically funny, with the juxtaposition of their cute presence against their morbid intentions. Now, onto what I didn't really like about the film. For starters, the first third of the film feels very slow. The movie feels like it drags on, and while I understand it's likely taking its time to develop Mahito and his surroundings and grief, I found it to be a tad bit boring, mainly in the parts of the movie in their new home. Regarding the characters, I feel like we don't really get to know any one of them all that much. Mahito, despite wrestling with his grief, feels a little bland? I mean, aside from his goal of searching for Natsuko, we don't really know much about him. He's determined, yeah, but not much else. We don't really get to know the other characters. The relationship between Natsuko and Mahito isn't really explored. The younger version of Kiriko is cool and tough, but we don't get to know her or Mahito's great uncle, or Himi for that matter, who ends up being a younger version of Mahito's mother. It introduces a whole new element of time and how, when she's gone for a year during her youth, it was because she was in the tower the film takes place in, and she needs to return to her home so she can give birth to Mahito despite having met him in the tower? The Grey Heron mentioned something about his mother not really being dead, which I guess could mean she was in the tower the whole time, but... Uh... I'm not sure. It's not that deep, admittedly, but it takes me out of the film a bit. The movie also feels a little all over the place, thematically speaking. There's hints of grief, perseverance, love, acceptance, friendships, and war, but I feel like these aren't really explored all that much. It reminds me of Howl's Moving Castle, where there's a great fantastical story being told that's trying to juggle a number of themes and never really focusing on any one of them. I would have liked for the film to focus on one or two of these. For example, when Mahito finally comes around to calling Natsuko his mother, since she's technically his aunt but now his stepmother, 
it falls flat for me. The relationship doesn't feel developed and it comes out of nowhere when she tells him that she hates him when he tries to rescue her from the tower. Or when Mahito's granduncle asks him to be a successor in the world of the tower and it's supposed to be about succeeding generations but Mahito refuses because he says that he can't rule because he has malice within him. And I'm like, oh, okay, uh, I, I guess if you say so. Look, I don't want to be too hard on the film. I want to be clear, it's fantastic. And maybe my opinion of it will change on any succeeding watches. It's Studio Ghibli, so it's going to be another great piece of animation, but I do think it's not as good as I thought it would be. Also, I think the title flat out sucks. The Boy and the Heron? It feels so much weaker than its Japanese title, which is how do you live? That one I feel holds a lot more weight and can be interpreted in many ways. The Boy and the Heron doesn't roll off the tongue and it feels bland. Anywho, that's all I have to say on the film. Again, want to be clear, I did enjoy this film and overall had a good time. These are just my opinions. What did you think of the film? Let me know in the comments below. By the way, if you're a fan of Studio Ghibli like I am, I'm currently working on a video where I rank the 10 Ghibli Fest 2023 films. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on that when I finish it. But for the time being, check out some of my other content, take care, and have yourself a damn good one.